Hello, how you doing? Welcome to the eighth episode of Haverin. In this episode, I'm speaking with Colin Bramwell, who is a poet and a performer. And we will be talking about his fringe show, Umbrella Man, which uh, is at Summer Hall at 10 a.m. I had a really good conversation with Colin. We talk about conspiracy theories, um, his time in Cambodia, and some of the themes that run through his show. So yeah, I hope you enjoy. Thank you very much. Okay, Colin, thanks for coming on the podcast. Not at all, man. Not at all. How's it going? How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm a little tired today. I, I, um, so I, I actually had a day off the show yesterday. Um, and um, so the day before that, I went out and had quite a late one. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm still feeling the tiredness a little bit. But otherwise, pretty good. Yeah, pretty happy with how it's all going. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what day are we on now? Is this day six, day seven? Day eight? Day nine. Day nine, right. Yeah. Okay. Um, day nine, eighth show for Umbrella Man. Cool. Um, yeah. And why don't you just um, introduce Umbrella Man in your own words, you know, tell people what it's about, what's the idea behind it? Sure. So I think um, I, I, I market it as a show that is about a man who believes in the flat earth. Um, and so if I'm, if I'm, you know, flyering or whatever, uh, I, I will pitch it to someone as this is the story of a man who believes that the, flat, uh, that the earth is flat and uh, who tries to prove it with mixed results. Um, but the show is actually about, uh, I think, about how grief can make people believe in impossible things um, mm. and can lead people down um, down strange routes and can lead people to go strange places, um, both both literally and uh, and kind of mentally. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's so much in that, and there's so much in the show. Um, so maybe we'll start with the kind of conspiracy theory stuff yeah, what cool. what led you to the to flat earth specifically and maybe to um conspiracy theories more generally because i know the name umbrella man that comes from the the jfk assass- assassination doesn't yeah, it yeah that's yeah. right uh-huh. so yeah no i um i there's a very short new york times documentary about that which i really recommend to like anyone um uh, it's a great documentary by errol morris mm. um it's fucking absolutely brilliant yeah the, the thin blue line yeah, yeah, uh-huh, yeah 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 oh i'll try and keep my language nice for this also um oh, sorry yeah, okay cool <laughs> <laughs> not dropped too many C bombs or anything. Um, yeah, no, my girlfriend's from Canada and she just came with me to see the show and we've uh, seen we've seen Square Go last night as oh, well. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. And she's uh I mean when we first met I had to kind of let her know that the Scots are quite loose with the with the C bomb yeah, and yeah, it's totally. not it's not the same as other places. Mm, yeah. mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. sorry, carry yeah, on. Yeah, no, 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 it's totally a thing that as well. I mean, yeah, between that and Square Go there'll be plenty of like plenty of swearing that we yeah. have enjoyed. Um Yes, uh, what were we saying um, about conspiracy theories? Mm. Um, so, yeah, so I'm from uh, a town called the Black. Uh, not, I'm from a town called Fort Rose, actually, in the Black Isle, um, which uh, is near Inverness. And so, anyone driving up the A9 will know that there are flat Earth uh, graffiti signs all the way going up the road. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. If you if you if you just drive, I mean. You, yeah, even talking to someone earlier about it, like driving to Perth, they're from Perth. Someone has graffitied the back of pretty much every road sign with the Earth is flat, um, which I was quite, um, I was, I was quite kind of struck by. Um, I, I make that journey like quite a lot because I live down in Edinburgh, but um, I, I go up to see my family a fair bit. And mm. uh, there was a point in my life where I was going up uh, the road and down the road uh, to quite a lot of funerals um, as well, which which goes back into the grief stuff, I think. Mm. Um, and uh, so, so there's also a shop in Inverness, which is opened as like a flat earth shop. I don't think it's ever really opened like properly to the public, but like it was in the papers and stuff like, like, um, yeah. And, and, and so Inverness, I think, has become a kind of um, center for, for flat earth. Oh. It's, it's the kind of place that, that people go um, to escape scrutiny. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and uh, I'm not really one for any of, the, any of the big conspiracy theories. I don't think that anyone really is, does have a big grand plan, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, I'd had conversations with some people in my life who were quite sympathetic to the 9-11 theories, uh, moon landing being faked. Um, mm. And so the flat earth thing actually comes out of the moon landing conspiracy theories itself. So, because obviously if we had landed on the moon, then we would be able to observe that the earth was round from space. So right. if you believe in the flat earth, likelihood is that you believe that we haven't gone to space. Um, Interesting, I didn't realize the connection there. Yeah, there's, there's yeah. a web. I think it's, um, it's a kind of, um, once you start to believe in others, they, in one, they start to kind of like link into the others. This is, the, this is a funny joke I've heard. There's no like, uh, 
it's not kind of like halfway. It's like if you yeah. believe in one conspiracy theory, then everything's a conspiracy. Often, yeah. yeah. Although I mean, uh, like like someone who I'm very very close to in my life is uh, uh, is quite sympathetic to the nine eleven as an inside job thing, and he thinks all the flat earthers are nuts. Yeah. So okay. he's like, oh my god, these people they believe in flat Earth. Nine eleven though, that was a thing. Um, and I think that there's that kind of it's a kind of weird thing of like what people end up believing. You know, um, I think uh, there's a line in the show about. Um, when people say they know something, what they mean is they believe in something. Um, and uh, I think that that is also something that people believe in regards to science too, you know. Um, I, uh, I, um, I, I've I, never done independent experiments to prove that gravity is a thing, but I mean, I, you know, I've got a certain amount of trust that it is. <laughs> yeah. um, and, um, but, but it's like, how do you justify that to anything? I remember, like, I grew up religious. Um, I'm not religious anymore, but I, I grew up in a, in, in a kind of, with a lot of Christianity. Um, and I remember the sort of thing of, like, well, oxygen exists, but you can't see oxygen. You know that, you know that, mm. that, that argument for the existence of God? Yeah, oxygen can't exist. You can't see oxygen, but it still exists. You're breathing. So why can't God exist? Why is it impossible for God to exist? You know? Um, and so, yeah, I think it's it it's kind of comes down to that thing of like belief and and being interested in why people believe things. Um, like I mean, like 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 flat Earth is a pretty extreme example. Mm. Um, but um, but yeah, um, religion, I suppose, as as well, is something that interests me quite a lot. Sure. Yeah. And these are fascinating subjects. I mean, I could probably sit here and we could chat for hours about religion and about conspiracy theories in and of themselves. But I want to try and uh, keep it with, with your show. So what you were saying there about grief and mm. about that being linked into conspiracy theory is quite interesting. It's not something I've often thought about because I know that conspiracy theories are often attractive to people that want to be part of something bigger than themselves. Sure. And, and, and people are often drawn to it for that reason. Well, it's a that, community, I think, sometimes of believers. In the same way that people are actually attracted to religion. Mm. Um, I think we, we became much more religious as a family after we moved up north. And my parents wanted uh, like to make friends and to, to have a community. And so we ended up kind of going to church partly because of that. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, no, I've interrupted you. Carry on. No, no, no. That mm. was, that, that's, that's kind of all part of the same thing. Mm. Um, so for you... So the, the main character in Umbrella Man is, is uh, this guy called Doug. Mm -hmm. um, so how much of Doug is in you and how much of you is in Doug? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Because um, I think quite a lot. I think it, it, um, to me, doing the show, um, it, was, it was a little bit sort of necessitated um, by the feeling that I needed to put more of myself in my work. Um, so I'd done other shows. Um, and it's what it wasn't like that they were completely devoid of myself, but I I had wanted to try and distance myself from them a little bit, a little mm. bit because of the stuff about poetry in the show. Because I was going to a lot of these poetry nights and performing, and getting a little bit sick of everyone talking about themselves, um, and uh, and so um, but then so I went kind of too far the other way. I almost I almost feel and wrote some a couple of shows that were you know first few times of writing shows that could be but, but were maybe a bit obscure and a bit a bit weird um that being said the second one I, i'm quite fond of still um the first one um was okay but maybe not so much um it all feels like a bit far away now all that sure but this is my so umbrella man is my fifth show that i've written okay well wow. um and did the other um, ones come to the fringe as well uh, yes, two of them came to Edinburgh Fringe, um, and I did them as part of the PBH Free Fringe, um, which was great. It was amazing just to get a free space. I think it was really, really important for my my, my development, kind of wanting to do this. Um, and then uh, Prague Fringe also. Um, so yeah, I've, I've performed. I've done about three Prague Fringes now, and taken um, three different shows. In fact, no, I've, I've taken about four shows to the Prague Fringe now. Um, in different iterations um, so um, but yeah yeah um, going back to the question um, I think that there is definitely more partly because of what I wanted to do as a performer um, I, I play piano for other, other other groups anyway I play piano for this group called Men With Coconuts um, and I wanted something where I could kind of show everything that I could do I suppose so I went to something with poetry and with singing and with um, with live music and a bit of storytelling something going towards theatre and um, but for it to still be a spoken word thing or to, for it to be a poetry thing sure um, so um, but then also in terms of the character himself and his journey um, there's like 
there's there's a fair bit of stuff, but then there's also a stuff a lot of stuff that that isn't. So Dig tends to have had more extreme things happen in his life than I have, yeah. um, because it's it makes for a better story, I think. Sure. Um, and uh, yeah, so and Dig is. Um, I think Duke's a bit less self-conscious than I am, and he seems to be. I think sometimes he's probably enjoying himself a little bit more because of it. Yeah. Um, like um, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm quite influenced by clowning and the idea of being like an idiot on stage, and I think that there are parts of him which are like a bit, you know, a bit stupid, but not in a not in a not in a bad way. Mm. Um, and certainly not in a way of kind of like I wanted to have him as a sympathetic person who believed in conspiracy theories because. The other side of the conspiracy theories is people who are like, you know, science evangelists and... That can convert you. I think that it can be quite unpleasant, actually. It can be a, another way of kind of judging people if, if you say, well, you don't know what someone else has gone through, right? So if you say, oh, well, you're an idiot for believing that, then I feel like it can be a, sometimes a bit of a failure of compassion, mm. I suppose. And so I wanted to try and write someone who was, was pretty like me, obviously looks like me, Although I don't, my hair isn't this long normally. <laughs> I've had to grow it. It's for some reason it made a lot more sense to to, to have longer hair. Um, no, it's a great performance because I didn't actually because I wasn't familiar with uh, some of your other work before this, yeah, so sure. I wasn't actually sure if uh, if you would have as thick an accent and if if, mm-hmm. if you know that was more kind of like how much of it was a performance actually. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting, man. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting because I do often exaggerate like my accents if I'm performing just poetry. Um, or anything because I like to perform in different voices and I think it keeps it fresh and it's something different Um, so um, so yeah um, but then also there's the there's the kind of black isle accent that um, I mean I I don't know if I have a black isle accent I've got a pretty neutral accent Mm. because I wasn't born in the black isle but I lived there since I was about three or four years old Um, but uh, yeah there is the exaggerated sort of Indonesian accent which is people talking like this and it's a very specific accent as well like I remember when I moved down to Edinburgh and I was like here well this is what people sound like where I'm from eh? and yeah. do this whole Highland fucking exaggerated thing and then everyone's like what that's, incre- that's, that's crazy I've never heard that accent before you know it sounds like Somerset to people yeah and, it does um, have a kind of tinge of that yeah 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 it's why I ask people the accent question in the show because I'm quite like interested I had someone said Jamaica the other day wow I was amazed at that that was a funny moment yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, quite a bit of audience interaction in the show like how does yeah. it how's that been you know um, today seemed alright there was a like I mean I guess being on at 10am yeah it could, it could be hit or miss really it's a funny one but I think it would be harder probably being on at like 9pm in a comedy club you mm. know um, I saw a show the other day where there was a lot of audience interaction and it was only after leaving the show and speaking to the people who were in it that I realised there wasn't meant to be any at all um, but uh, um, no I quite like the audience interaction thing um, so my, my one of my last things was called Tiger and it was a, um, it was a choose your own narrative spoken word show okay um, so uh, like um, got to yeah the audience would choose what this character would do kind of um, like there would always be like two paths basically um, so I was quite interested in sort of like the group dynamics of it um, I worked as a re- reviewer of comedy for a while and I found that interesting in terms of like what people find funny and, and how the, the just the atmosphere of people in the room um, can really affect um, a joke coming across and landing. Mm. So today, um, although I was I was getting a nice reaction from people, I've had ones where people have been really really pissing themselves laughing, and that's been made it easier for me because I I get that payoff, you know. So today was a little bit. Um, I think um, the audience were a little bit quieter today than sure. they are normally. Um, I was in a funny mood this morning as well, so I think it wasn't my probably wasn't my favorite performance of it today, um, but um, it was still fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, it was it was it was a lot of fun. Um, some of the things that you know, I, it was kind of like a a patchwork of different aspects to this to this main character's life, mm. um, and one of them being conspiracy theories that we've kind of talked on a little bit. Um, so, how did you get into the mind of a conspiracy theorist? Like, do you do you have? I mean, you said you've already said that you don't have any kind of you don't you don't think there's a grand plan. No, uh-huh. but. Um, like, did you go down some YouTube rabbit holes and stuff? <laughs> like, how did you... Yeah, I did. I, I, I watched a few videos. Um, what I was really interested in was, like, how people try and argue it. Um, and so I watched some videos of some Scottish flat earthers talking to people in the meadows and having filmed it. And, um, you know, um, and 
you know, I didn't do an intense amount of research um, in terms of yeah into the into the conspiracy things because there's I mean it's 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 a it's a big kind of black hole of like sure. you could you could really really <laughs> dive into it and yeah. there's um oh, and there's some really funny videos as well and some really great conspiracies I mean like have you ever seen Zeitgeist. Yes. Yeah. There's a few uh-huh. of them, isn't there? There's like one, two, and three. I think I've seen the first one. The yeah. Original, yeah. Uh-huh. I saw the first one. Yeah. And um, well, no, actually, no, I didn't. I know I, I saw the first part of the first one, and then I turned it off because I thought it was like, <laughs> this is clearly nonsense. <laughs> you know, these people are nuts. But um, so. Hmm. But anyway, yeah, I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> I yeah, knew, yeah, yeah. I knew no, it came getting laid off in like black holes. Well, and see, it's, yeah, it happens. It's it, a really, it really interesting. It's an interesting thing to talk about and like mm. belief and why people believe in these things. So why, yeah, why did you choose that as a kind of central? Why, why is Doug so interested in proving that the Earth is flat? Um, well, I think that I, like 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 in the show, he kind of gives it up a wee bit. You know, um, I think that there's, um, um, I think that it's all kind of related to all this other kind of stuff mm. in his life. Um, I, why is Doug trying to prove the earth is flat? I don't think that he has a reason, but there are other things going on. Mm. Um, there's not that one thing, but I think that there's this, there's this big death in his life that he finds really hard to deal with. Um, and, uh, probably diverts a lot of the atten- of a lot of the feeling of that into this kind of like action, um, which, which, should um, probably be diverted into into other things, you know? mm. but it's funny because I think when people are in pain, they can often either get get um, get active about it or they can get inactive about it. Um, and I've felt myself um, when I'm in pain that um, that I can go either way. And so actually, writing the show was for me a way to get active about it too, because mm. um, I lost a I lost a very very good friend of mine. Um, and uh, and it was it was a, it was just a very strange thing that happened, um, and uh, yes, that that really upset me. Mm. Um, and after a while, I realised I needed to write something about it as well. So that was a big, um, a, probably the actually more so than conspiracy theories and being interested in that. Of course. But I think that um, there is something, to my mind, like like something that you could relate to the idea of the Earth being flat to grief because. Um, the earth can seem pretty flat if you're feeling awful. Mm. Um, it sounds like, I mean, yeah. And also, I guess um, something horrible and horrific happening can shatter your, the way that you structure the world, I guess. So it allows mm. things to creep in that might be of, you know, the, the, the strangest, maybe, maybe from a place that, that doesn't necessarily make any sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, certainly you're more susceptible to it. Mm. Um, it's why people might turn to religion too. I think, um, yeah, because of other things that are going on, or like because of uh, because of traumas and things like that. And I mean, those places, as we were talking about earlier, they they provide you with a kind of community, you know. Um, and so it's just people that you know, but you also have to kind of swallow the. Is it the red pill or the blue pill? Yeah, which one is it that wakes him up? I can never remember. I don't know. I don't know. Um, <laughs> one of the pills, though. Um, yeah, I mean, in the show, in the poem, that there's he takes both. He takes both of them, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah um, was that the Was that the Umbrella Man poem? That yeah. One? Yeah, uh, I loved yeah. that one. Oh, thanks I loved very it. much. Yeah, yeah, yeah I really liked it. That Does that exist anywhere on its own? Have you recorded that or put that out like just as oh, a? I've got a video of it, you know. But okay. I, um, I haven't. Um, I haven't like kind of edit it and properly put it together as a thing. Um, I've been performing a lot though, just yeah. I, partly as a kind of, it's it's like, if you're doing particularly a poetry show and you want to uh, you want to promote it, then it's good to have a little bit from the show that you can take out and just do sure. on its own, like a little five minutes. So like that, that works normally quite well for a kind of five, six minute open mic slot or whatever, if I want people to come along. Yeah. Um, not that I wrote it for just those cynical reasons, but um, I, I think that it, it becomes the kind of center of the show a little bit. Um, it certainly has got the most stuff about the conspiracy theories and stuff like that in. And the paranoia, I think, too. I think mm. that also, if you're if you're upset about something, you might not be dealing with it in the best way. Like, Duke's a weed smoker, say. So, um, as am I. <laughs> <laughs> I've dabbled myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, I'm sure. And sometimes um, that, that allows you to kind of give conspiracy theories a little bit more time than you normally would as well. Oh, well, yeah, often. Often there's... But I think it's like whatever whatever... 
is your poison you know like like that's a big aspect of it too um which is why that's in the show I, at least i didn't want the show to be kind of descending into like stoner humor or whatever, <laughs> you know but it's a wee bit of a stoner show in a way yeah yeah for sure um, because yeah people people do have um their kind of crutches is like, it's like a major thing mm. no mm. definitely Another big part of the show is, uh, well, is a, a sizable part anyway, is Cambodia. Yeah. Why, uh, why did you choose to talk about, um, why, did, why was Dogey's a tour guide at Angkor mm. Wat? So, yeah, a lot of the stuff from this comes from um, just a point in my life where things weren't going very well. Mm. Um, and uh, it was a, 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 my first really big relationship had just come to an end. Right. Um, it was kind of a perfect storm of that. I was I just finished university. I didn't really know what I was going to do with myself. I decided I didn't want to continue in university, and I, that was originally my big plan, you know. So um, I was sitting on my couch. I was staying with my sister at the time. Again, I was also living at home with my parents. It was like a total perfect storm. Like it was like 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 nothing was right. <laughs> um, and so I uh, I um, I was I was staying with my sister just on her couch. Stayed there for about a week. Um, and I was reading online an article um, uh, on in the Guardian about a Cambodian singer uh, called Ross Saray Sathia, mm. um, and I hadn't thought a great deal about Cambodia before. I didn't really know much about it, but I started listening to some of the music from the fifties and sixties. Um, Cambodia had a big moment um, musically in, in in that time. Uh, because there was a kind of psychedelic surf rock kind of rock and roll movement um, which combined traditional Cambodian music and uh, more kind of Western rock and roll music. Um, and, and I've never heard anything like it since. I think it's a really original music. And it was also music that kind of came to a close very abruptly um, after the Cambodian genocide where mm. um, a lot of artists were rounded up and killed. Um, in fact, just a lot of people. A lot of people you know. generally, yeah. Yeah, very, uh, very few musicians from that movement survived, though. Uh, and and Ross Ray Sathia didn't. Um, and so I was, I was quite, I, was, I suppose I was quite haunted by this music. And so I thought I would look for a way to try and go. Um, so fast forward, maybe about, um, maybe about a year, and I'd been working um, as a support worker in Edinburgh. And I had a little bit of money, and I had a little bit of time I could take off. And so I thought... If I can find cheap flights, I'll go to Cambodia. Um, I'll just go for a couple of weeks because that was all the time I could take off work. And um, and I went there, and I it was it was a it was a really tough holiday. It was actually one of the like 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 holidays most of the time aren't They're actually really nice. Mm. Um, but this one was weird um, because I got there and all of this weird stuff started happening. Um, the cards thing happened. That happened, my, the poker jack thing Yeah, happened. the poker jack thing happened on wow. my first day. Um, except I wasn't robbed. Um, yeah, so uh, there's a bit in the show uh, where there is a crucial game game of cards. Um, so that game, because I didn't have all of my stuff with me, went fine. I just kind of got out of the place and um, went, on, went on my way um, and didn't realise that I was even being scammed until three or four hours later when I had... Uh, changed hostels and moved across town because I was worried that they were going to find me. Um, wow. So it was, yeah, so I arrived and I got a real, real dose of being out like, like out of water, you know. It yeah. was my first time in Asia too. Um, same with same with Duke when he arrives. And so that happened to me on my first day, which set the tone. Um, not that, I mean, it, it got easier <laughs> from that point. Or was that, sorry, um, Phnom Penh or was that in Siem In Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I nearly didn't go to Siem Reap. Um, and uh, what I did was I went to I went around I actually had a really nice time I met some really nice people um, but then I had a weird experience but I went out to an island which is meant to be a kind of the beach style desert island um, is this down near Chinookville or yeah, yeah, yeah yeah down near Chinookville which is a strange place yeah, I've not yeah. been I've done, I've done Phnom Penh and mm. Sam Reap but I've heard from people that Chinookville is a bit crazy it's really crazy yeah. you know and people so I was staying in a tent on a beach um, again smoking weed and like just being just finding myself incredibly unhappy weirdly and I was mm. and, and then I found myself surrounded by all these people who um, even though you're objectively in like like you know probably one of the most beautiful places that you could imagine everyone was dull and weird and um, like really obsessed with the idea that they were in paradise um, which I found to be a little bit you know I found a lot of people had quite crap attitudes to to being in that country as well. And, you know, I, I met people who had gone out to the killing fields and were like, yeah, you know, it was a lot. And I was like, fucking hell, you know, like, like, 
you got to show a bit of respect, you know, after something like that. And, mm. you know, like, like also Westerners, like just behaving really badly, um, like, you know, participating in the sex industry in that part of the world, which I think, I don't know if like, you found that in Vietnam. Yeah. 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 It, that's a really dark thing. It's quite sex hard to packs, prepare for. They're, they're called. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, yeah, some really bad stuff goes on there. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I, I found myself like quite interested in these encounters, but people also just wanted to spend time by myself. So I went up to Siem Reap and got myself a hotel room for the like for, for three days and just mm. didn't really speak to anyone. Um, and I went around Anchor Wat myself and that kind of um, went Which some is mobbed. To, if you don't go at like seven in the morning, it's yeah, just like you yeah, can't yeah. move for... Well, I got up. I got up very early. I got up at yeah. maybe four in the morning, went and like uh, rented a, a bike and, and rode around. Um, yeah. Should I tell that story? I've got quite a funny story. Um, so Anchor Wat, um, people often get deported from the country because there's a, there was a thing about people getting naked there um and so people would get naked obviously it's a big religious site so you like like people really shouldn't but yeah there was a there was a case of i think some um i'm gonna go out on a limb and say australians maybe um <laughs> went and got naked and uh and then got deported and um and so i was I had no intention to get naked in anchor Wat, but i just got myself these like trousers like lightweight trousers to kind of like you know cycle around in um and i was cycling about and i was like fuck man my balls are really really sore like what's happening here um and i looked down and the whole material had worn away and it was just like my nuts on the seat <laughs> and i was like oh no i'm gonna get deported <laughs> and uh, and so yeah i was like 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 climbing up these like big temples like just trying to make sure that like, <laughs> no one got caught. Anyway, that's besides the point. That was just a, a funny thing that happened. Uh, yeah, I don't know why I told that story, but um, why not? Why not? I suppose. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So so I got back home and I, I found that, that that trip was really kind of stayed with me, um, especially the people that I met there and the people like like, like um, just certain, a few conversations I'd had with people about that place somehow attracting people who were going through shit um, and maybe weren't dealing with it well or mm. um, they wanted to be in, in a place where there was no consequence but they'd found themselves in a place which if history proves anything had the greatest amount of consequence that you could possibly imagine mm. um, and uh, I didn't feel very insightful about it I felt very strange about it um, and uh, it stuck with me that trip and so I um, when it came time for me to kind of probably address a little bit why I was there too, um, it made sense to set it there. I think. Sure. Um, I'm. I'm. I, my own criticism of the show is that I feel like I would like there to be more about Cambodia in it, as opposed to conversation with a white person in Cambodia. You know. Yeah. Um. I'm. I'm very. I'm kind of sensitive to the kind of Orientalist thing, and I don't want to be like you know like like to like kipling about it you know because there's yeah i mean you're there in, in a somewhere that's very far that people should be representing and that it's a poor country too so yeah um harder for artists to represent it themselves so i i want i hope that i've done an okay job with it i want to yeah um yeah um it's something to think about definitely for sure um, so did this the show tour? Did it go to? It went to Australia as well. Yeah, did it? it did. Yeah. 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 How did it go down in Australia? It went great. Yeah, actually, yeah, it was really nice. Um, yeah, I uh, I think that the show itself, I kind of leaned a little bit more into the humour in it there because um, I was at the Adelaide Fringe, which is obviously all sorts of performances going on, but like um, Australia's got a huge comedy scene, and and so um, I found myself um, uh, like 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 having a lot of kind of comedy audiences, which was cool. Um, mm. So I think the show got a wee bit funnier there. Um, but yeah, no, I, I had a really great time in Adelaide. Um, I think Adelaide's a brilliant, brilliant fringe. And I, I didn't know how it was going to come across because it's so like black owl, the accent, you know, in the yeah. show. And I didn't think that I was going to change it particularly, but people seemed to respond to it, you know. And it was cool because I had people coming who were like um, from Cambodia also, you know, and there's a bit more kind of crossover obviously between that sort of like Southeast Asia and, and those countries. Of course, yeah, yeah. So I actually got to perform it to like, more um, Asian audiences, which is good. Um, so 
yeah why don't you tell people when the show is on and where people can find you online cool man um so the show is on every day apart from the 12th and the 20th at summer hall uh, at 10 a.m um uh, for some reason <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah i mean i'm just really happy to be in summer hall it's a really really good venue and yeah. there's all really brilliant brilliant shows going on there too um um so yeah um and uh i because i'm social media savvy i changed my twitter handle to at brambrella so uh, <laughs> my second name is bramwell so right. it's b-r-a-m-b-r-e-l-l-a uh, and that's the same with me on instagram also and then i have a facebook page so you can type in colin bramwell poetry or just colin bramwell and my, probably my poetry page will come up nice one well it's been good talking to you mate yeah, thanks very much for having me man it's much appreciated cheers cheers Hello, how you doing? Thank you so much for watching this episode of Haverden. If you enjoyed it, then please share it with your family and friends on social media. Leave us a review on iTunes and subscribe to us on both iTunes and YouTube. Thanks so much.